Hi everyone, I have a new knife I would love to share with you to give you a bit of a preview of it because I have a bit of a bad track record when it comes to getting all my testing done before I do a review on something. So it's not tested yet, but out of the box, I'm pretty impressed with it. And I'm hoping to do some testing with it very soon. That's it by a company that's I'm not sure if they're called X tactical or just tactical and I'm thinking it's their hunter series it is they say it's handcrafted which you know that's probably just hand finished and hammer forged probably an industrial hammer but you know what that's nothing really to be turning your nose up keeps costs down don't it but you know it's hammer forged and they say handcrafted and it's heat treated to 59, well, they call it hammer forged and heat treated to 59 HRC. It's a fixed blade, obviously. 21.5 centimeters overall length, blade length 10.2 centimeters, blade thickness 3.9 millimeters. They just say it's high carbon steel and natural zebra wood with lanyard hull and the sheath is nylon but you know what it's a carbon steel blade it's very beautiful nice wooden handle and they, they say it's hammer forged so, though probably a big mechanical hammer big industrial hammer but you know that's nothing to really turn your nose up against but what would you say if I said this knife cost me $40 I'd say you're a damn liar well, shut up, you. That's right, $40. But it has a pretty decent thickness for the length. It's a sabre grind, leaving to a hollow grind, finishing with a convex. A convex out of the box on a $40 hand-forged carbon steel knife. Full tang. For $40 in Australia, that's really good. And it ticks off a lot of the boxes of things I like. Now, of course, carbon steel, I like. Yes, I've used a few stainless ones, but I really want that carbon steel. It's full tang, which definitely I want. I love the wooden handles. It, I love that kind of rustic look it just looks like a beautiful knife except for the fact that they've put their name and logo on it but that should come off with a bit of sandpaper i hope and then i've just got to put a bit of a patina on it and no one need be the wiser it just has that old rustic look which i love in a carbon steel blade that is heat treated and with a nice wooden handle relatively thick spine, convex, and came real sharp out of the box. And I was impressed with how sharp this thing came out of the box. I haven't really tested its sharpness yet, but not only is it a convex at quite a nice low angle, but it was able to push cut paper. Which I forgot to bring some out today, so I'll just do my little shaving test. Does it shave? Yes. Arm shaving sharp, out of the box, $40, high carbon steel, full tang. That is great value, especially for a knife sold in shops in Australia. Now, I haven't been able to find it online yet, but I bought it in at Anaconda. It's not up on their website. It's a relatively new product in their line, they tell me. So it may be going up on their website. It may not be. I hope it is because not everyone's going to be able to get to an Anaconda in Australia. But if you go on Anaconda's website, you should hopefully be able to find your closest store. And hopefully it's not too far away for you to go and grab one. Or maybe even call them up. But I'd like to be able to track down the makers of the knife and see if I can find their website. I've been looking, I just can't find it. 
you know, hopefully be able to find it for even cheaper, maybe? So, I'm not turning my nose up at $40 for a knife like that. Uh, the sheath leaves a little something to be desired. So, I'm going to think of some tests I can do with this knife to see if it will be tough enough and perform well enough to be up to my standards. And if it meets my standards after testing, I may make a crocodile leather sheath for this beauty. And of course, get rid of that logo on it because, well, kind of breaks up that rustic vintage look that this knife has. Though at least they were considerate enough to put it in a place where it is easily removed. So you can just have your great old timey looking knife. And honestly I reckon a knife like this would be very popular for the YouTube community, especially Australia. It ticks off a lot of the requirements that Dave Canterbury likes in his knives. You know, full tang, carbon steel. It has got a bit of a liner on it. It does have a bit of a paint job on it to protect the steel, but it hasn't got that on the spine. So I'd like to see if I can use a piece of flint and make sparks with it, though I don't have any flint with me. That's, that's going to go in the maybe column. But I definitely want to see how well it shoots sparks with a ferrocium rod. Though it kind of... It has a 90 degree spine, but it's smoothed off at the edges, so I might have to sharpen up the spine with a file. It's no big deal. A lot of people want to take those sharp angles off so it doesn't hurt your delicate little hands. For me, I'd rather be able to shoot sparks and get a fire going. You know, and let's face it, my hands are not little and delicate. And it is a beautiful knife. So this is definitely something I like. Though I would love a much larger knife. It's not going to be able to chop like one of my big knives. So that's kind of sad. But I'm going to think of some tests to run it through. I want to be able to process some dry hardwood up to an inch and a half in diameter. I want to be able to process that then into kindling and do some feather sticks. I'll see how it shoots sparks from a ferrule rod. And if it needs some modifications, I can modify it. And I want to do some carving with it. Especially a spoon, see how that tip handles for carving out a concavity in a spoon. I may have to tweak it. But you know, a lot of knives need a little bit of work done on them to maximize their performance. When we're talking straight out of the box, especially in the $40 price range. But as a starting point, this just looks so awesome. Downside is the sheath's a bit tacky and you know, that belt loop. I don't know how well it's going to handle my crocodile leather belt. It's got those bulges from the scales, so might not be... Oh, let's throw it on, see how it, how it goes. Yep, it fits on my crocodile leather belt. However, it's a bit of a tacky looking sheath, so if it really turns out to be as good as I hope it is, I may make a crocodile leather sheath for it, because it is just gorgeous. And if you have a anaconda shop near you, you might want to check it out. Alright, everyone, hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you will stay tuned to see the testing of this knife. I'm excited. Alright, everyone, hope you have a good one.